Hi, and welcome back to our study of the Dhammapada. Tonight we continue on with verse number 63, which reads as follows. Yo balo manyati balyang pandito vapite naso balo cha panditamani sawe balo ti uchati which translates as follows. Yo balo manyati balyang the fool who knows that they are a fool. Pandito wa pitena. So, for that reason, or to that extent, they can be called wise. Pandi, uh, balo cha panditamani. But the fool who thinks of themselves as wise, satwe balo tibuchati. That person indeed is called a fool. So, very, it's one of it's a it's one of the more important Dhammapada verses. I don't know more memorable, I suppose. It's um, it's a powerful one, especially for those of us beginning the path and feeling discouraged sometimes. Anyway, we'll go through the story and then we'll talk about the verse. The story goes. It's a very short story, actually. We're going to find several of the Dhammapada stories are quite short, and so there's not much to say about them. Uh, when the Buddha was dwelling in Savati, there were these two thieves who uh, decided that they would go off to the monastery and try to rob the people who came to listen to the, the Buddha's teaching. So here in Savati, the, it was a big city, walled city. You can even still see the walls if you go now uh, to, to, to visit. That's all that's left is a big field with walls and ruins. The ruins are just covered mounds of who knows what. The whole you can see if you go up on these pagodas, you can see the walls all around the city. So there would have been rich people and 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 uh, high class people who would go to see the Buddha and hear the Buddha talk, uh, hear the Buddha teach. And uh, because they would be so intent upon what the Buddha was saying, they'd often just lose track of their personal belongings, lose track, you know, uh, lose their care for the, their possessions. It would actually be easy pickings. This happens in Thailand, actually, or it, it has happened in Thailand. So they say when you go to when you go to hear the monks talk, uh, don't 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 <laughs> keep your belongings close to you. If you're going to meditate, meditate with your you know, purse in your hands or something like that. Because uh, unfortunately, um, a byproduct of letting go is the uh, not not worrying too much about your belongings. So, or the best the best uh, advice is to leave your your valuables at home no? when you go to the monastery. Uh, in 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 large crowds, you know, everyone sitting around meditating. So they got there. These two thieves went and knew the Buddha was giving a talk and so they went and they saw the crowd and they split up to go and pickpocket the belongings of the audience. But one of them, when he heard the Buddha speak, he stopped for a second, kind of looking and scoping out his target. And Then he stopped and listened to what the Buddha had to say. And he became so enchanted by what the Buddha said that he just forgot all about stealing and he really listened to what the Buddha had to say and got the deeper meaning and, and, and realized there was a higher purpose to life and, and that uh, theft of a few coins was, was meaningless in the, in the, in the whole scheme, grand scheme of things. And so he sat down and he started meditating and, and based on the Buddha's teaching he was able to become a sotapanna, just sitting there listening. And uh, so at the end of the night, he he just went back home without without stealing anything. The other guy went, found his target, to, stole some, <coughs> I think it was five gold coins, pocketed them, went back home and uh, <coughs> had his wife cook him up some some rich food. And he'd gotten gotten the dough, gotten the spoils, and so he uh, prepared. He had his wife prepare a meal 
with the with what uh, you know, buying groceries or, or whatever and preparing a meal for him. But the other guy went home and and knowing he had no money and he had nothing to show for it, went went home and and ate nothing. And then the the the, the thief who who actually stole found out about this. I, you know, they were bragging to each other. So he went up and asked him what he had gotten, and he said he didn't get anything. And so, he looked at him and he said, oh, he, he said, what I, you know, what I got from this was wisdom. And uh, the, the first thief says, oh, really wise are you? You're so wise you can't even feed your family. Look at me, what I've got. <clears throat> you call yourself wise. Who's the one who's able to feed, who's able to put a meal on the table? <coughs> and the other, the other thief, ex-thief, looked at his ex-friend and, and, and shook his head and thought to himself, Look at this guy, this fool who thinks he's a wise man, not realizing how foolish he is. And so he went to the Buddha, he went back to, to Jetavana, where the Buddha, the Buddha was staying in the monastery, and related this to the Buddha and said, uh, it's amazing how foolish people, what, what they think passes for wisdom. And that's the story the Buddha then told us. He, he, he said, very much, that's very much the case. The true fool thinks they're wise. But a person, if they're able to know that they're foolish, to that extent you can call them wise. This is um, imp an important verse because it highlights the importance of wisdom, the importance of truth, no? of understanding the truth. The, the, where true, with the, true wisdom means understanding the truth. It doesn't mean being able to lie and cheat and... and uh, connive or, or, or plunder and so on. There's a difference between worldly intelligence and, and wisdom. <coughs> and the, the key here that, that does have some interesting implications is that knowledge is always better. <coughs> Many people are shocked when they hear that in Buddhism we say it's better to know that you're doing that what you're doing is wrong so this um, we have this intuitive idea that if you commit <coughs> a bad deed we talked about this on Sunday no? at the Dharma at the, the MBVCA if we have this intuitive notion that if someone does a, a bad de performs an unwholesome deed not knowing that it's unwholesome that they're somehow less responsible less culpable for their behavior Whereas a person who does something knowing it's wrong, we always say, you should know better. You know better than that. So if the younger, if the, if the younger sibling steals something, they say he doesn't know any better. And so they let him off for that. But the older sibling who knows better, this is how it goes with, in, in courts as well, right? The, the kid who's 12 to 18 doesn't know any better. Under 18 doesn't know any better. But once you're 18, you're, you know better. And so you're punished. So we, we get this idea that somehow that would be the case for karma. It would be uh, less karmically potent to do something <coughs> not knowing that it's wrong. And that, that's uh, really what this, this verse is talking about. That it's... Um, if, if all you know is that you're a fool, that's better than not knowing you're a fool and going about doing things thinking you're wise. This story uh, aptly illustrates that point that um, the person who knows what they're doing is wrong, if, even if they're uh, engaging in it, the idea is that they will engage in it hesitantly. But a person who thinks they're wise in doing will not only perform evil deeds, but will boast and brag about them. A, a, an act of theft, whether you know it's wrong or not, is, is, a, corrupt, is a corrupting act. It's a violation of other people's... Um, property, other, other people's very being. You know? And if, if you can't see that, the, 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 um, the intent to do it, the, 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 the zest and the zeal in, in performing the act is much higher than if you can see that you're actually violating the person's being. If, if you know that what you're doing is reprehensible, um, there's that force against you the internal force acting against you. Now, the opposite holds for, for doing good deeds, which is an interesting 
um, truth that if a person performs good deeds, they're more powerful when you know that they're good deeds. <coughs> Obviously, if you know something that is good for you, is beneficial, you're, you're more inclined to perform it. You have more uh, confidence in performing it. You're more content in, and interested and zealous about it. Whereas if you don't know that something's good, you know, your parents drag you off to the monastery to listen to the Buddhist teaching, or you know, drag you off to give offerings to monk, to give food to the monks, and so on. Or if um, someone's nagging you to give charity, or you know, you're keeping the precepts out of uh, keeping religious precepts out of some kind of tradition, traditional compulsion, or so on. This is substandard to actually meaning it, actually doing it, performing it from the heart. And so <coughs> the point in both cases is knowledge is, uh, is uh, of greatest importance. So it's, it's a catchphrase that you can use for people. And uh, if someone boasts about bad deeds, you say, well, well, I may not be perfect, but at least I know my fault. Uh, this, is, this is really one of the most dangerous flaws that there is, along with like wrong view or, or, or belief in, in, in wrong view. It is a form of wrong view. If you believe that uh, what you're doing is, if you believe that bad deeds are a good thing, and that you're somehow wise in your foolishness, that's the most dangerous. That's more dangerous than the deeds themselves, because that's what's going to uh, compel you to perform the deeds with enthusiasm and perpetually. Hmm? So, what does it mean to be a fool? A fool is someone who acts speaks and thinks uh, unho unwholesomely. So they perform unwholesome deeds with, with the body, they kill, they steal, they cheat, uh, they perform unwholesome deeds with speech, they lie, they gossip, they uh, scold and they um, prattle or chat, chatter. And they perform unwholesome deeds with mind. It means their minds are full of <coughs> greed and anger and delusion, ill will and conceit and so on. If, uh, so, so we all have these tendencies, right? We may not all kill and steal and lie and so on, but we all have the anger, the greed and the delusion. Uh, until you become an arahant, these things exist in the mind. That's not the worst, that's not the most uh, important or, or the most horrific fact of, of, of the mo most horrific evil that there is. Worse than actually, it's not the real problem, it's not the, the most compelling problem. The most compelling problem is our knowledge of what these are doing to ourselves. A person who is angry, perpetually angry, if they know that they're angry, there, there's a potential to work it out. If they, know, if they know that it's a bad thing to be angry, if a person is self-righteously angry, these are the people you have to watch out for, or the people who feel that there's benefit to being angry. <coughs> people who think that there's benefit to killing, there's benefit to stealing, and so on. This is the problem. A person who steals knowing it's wrong and feeling guilty about it, but steals a loaf of bread to feed their family, for example. This is... This is uh, an unwholesome act, but nothing compared to nothing compared to stealing, uh, thinking there, not realizing there's anything wrong with it. Stealing thinks <coughs> it's a good thing. Stealing from poor people, for example. So, how does this relate to our meditation? It relates directly to insight meditation, because insight meditation is what allows you to see this. The first step in insight meditation is not removing of greed, anger, and delusion. It's, it, it, it focuses on one aspect of delusion, and that's the wrong view aspect. The first step towards becoming wise <coughs> is realizing that you're a fool. That's really it. This, is, this verse is very important for us at the beginning, because this is our first goal, our first step. Our first step is to see what we're doing wrong, to realize that we're not doing the right things, that what we're doing is leading us to suffer. In fact, deep down, that, that's really the final step as well. In the beginning, it's uh, intellectual realiz but realization that 
killing is wrong, stealing is wrong. Eventually, it's just the realization, realization that all greed, all anger, and all delusion is causing us suffering, is uh, harmful to our minds. So this, this constant and systematic uh, observation, introspection, and analysis that, it, that comes from, from just reminding ourselves and, and staying objective about our experience This allows us to see what we're doing wrong and uh, allows us to change our behavior. So in the beginning to know that we're foolish and uh, then to do something about it. In fact, it really is, deep down, it's the only step that needs to, to be accomplished. Every moment that you see that you're doing something foolish, that what you're doing is truly foolish at that moment, when you see that this reaction of yours to things, when you react, when you overreact, simple real-life examples, when you get anxious, so if I get anxious that I have to talk in front of you, so, so I'm giving this talk and I feel anxious, when I see how ridiculous that is, <coughs> how it's not helpful, it's not reasonable, it's not a proper response, I say that, that that's really a silly thing to do, it's, it's, it's foolish. Seeing that, uh, that wisdom, that is what changes my, my behavior. Next time I have no, no reason to, to act in that way, no reason to set my mind in that direction. When you truly realize that it's wrong, your mind doesn't go in that direction. This is the key to Buddhism, key to the Buddha's teaching, this truth, that knowledge is really true knowledge, true wisdom, true understanding of, of the uh, mistakes that we're making, knowledge of the... the problem with our, our reactions. This is the this is the way out of suffering. This knowledge. Knowledge of suffering. Knowledge that what we're doing is causing us suffering. So very important verse, maybe more even more important than it appears, but that's a very catchy one and it's one that we should always think of and you can flaunt it to people who who uh, would say such things as when you're goody two shoes and you know, uh, uh, who, who brag and boast about their evil, their their bad deeds, their unwholesomeness, their treachery, their trickery, and so on. They shouldn't boast, but uh, it's a, a reminder for people. It's a good thing to remind our friends, to remind ourselves that the mo it's not we don't have to be perfect. Not at the beginning. The path to perfection is to realize your imperfections. The path to become wise is to realize your foolishness. That's it. That's the path. So, very important, and uh, I think I've about uh, beaten that horse dead. So, there's the verse for tonight. Thank you all for listening, and now we'll do some meditation. Uh, wishing you all peace, happiness, and freedom from suffering. Have a good